Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new episode of the Global Perspectives Show in partnership with Dukascopy TV. I'm Flavio Roman, and today we have with us for the second time Mr. Anton Golub from Olsen Limited, and we're going to discuss about the details of high-frequency trading. Anton, thank you very much for joining us again today. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, last time we spoke about uh, high-frequency trading in general, about how it appeared, what are their differences between uh, the high-frequency trading strategies and normal strategies, what's the relationship with the technology, and also about the history of it. Today we would like to know more about building an algorithm for high-frequency trading and about algorithms in general. How do you do them? Okay, so first of all, it's very important to distinguish two classes of high-frequency trading algorithms. First one is algorithmic execution, and the second one is actually al algorithmic decision-making. Okay, so algorithmic ex execution usually refers to an execution of a large market order that is employed by sell-side institutions. So in other words, a client, an in investment fund, comes to a broker and says, I need to purchase a large amount of shares. And then the broker employs high-frequency trading algorithms that actually slice this big order into many small orders. Then they choose appropriate time when to execute. And they try to reduce the slippage from this execution, but also hide the fact that they need to uh, execute a very large market order. Okay. And so now we go to algorithm decision making, which is actually employed by proprietary traders that in intend to generate profit or to generate alpha. There are many high frequency trading strategies there. And just to mention a few of them, uh, it's a liquidity provision, a liquidity detection, arbitrage and directional strategies. And I'll actually explain them. So liquidity provi provision strategies actually profit by providing liquidity to the marketplace. For instance, there's rebate trading where high frequency traders collect rebates, which are rewards from the exchange for posting limit orders. Also, there's market making where high frequency traders post continuous buy and sell orders and they profit by capturing the spread. Okay. And then we have uh, arbitrage strategies that uh, exploit pricing inefficiencies between financial securities that have mechanical or statistical relationships. So for instance, a high frequency trading, a high frequency trader can exploit pricing inefficiencies between an index and the corresponding ETF. Okay. And we have also directional trading strategies. They try to predict short term price movement and benefit from them. And here we have mean reversion strategies, momentum strategies and event based strategies. And finally, a very interesting uh, high frequency trading strategy is actually liquidity detection strategies. So here actually uh, high frequency traders try to detect an execution of a large market order and then a profit by trading ahead of it. So it's, there's a very interesting interaction between algorithmic execution and algorithm, al algorithmic decision making as well. This sounds very interesting. So what you're saying basically is that you could apply a high frequency trading strategy or algorithm to some of the well-known algorithms or strategies that were there before the computing power and also more than that. That's, that's exactly. Many, many, many trading strategies that were well known before the computing advance, advances are actually employed now, but they are employed really, really fast because high frequency traders can have the speed advantage there. So this would be one of the differences. That's yes. interesting. Now, um, we've heard sometimes in the media, maybe some news, even some books were published, one of them was called Flash Traders, yeah. that sometimes there's a problem with high frequency trading because some of these algorithms would take advantage of uh, moments of uh, really high uh, volatility and uh, also under such extreme conditions. Do you think there would be some regulations in place or what does it happen when uh, something in the market environment makes a uh, high volatility spike appear, like in the case when the Swiss National Bank uh, removed the peg to the euro. Okay, so this, uh, this is an excellent question and actually a lot of these accu accusations on high frequency trader traders s come from the fact that uh, trading values have undisclosed order types available to high frequency traders. In, in a sense, high frequency traders use these uh, order types that are not very well known, but they provide them with uh, 
priority in execution. In a sense, it appear when high frequency traders trade, it appears that they constantly get ahead of you. Okay. And there are many now. Uh, there are many many uh, regulations now that try to prevent those facts, but also they try to improve the market market stability. For instance, uh, now we have uh, lim uh, limit bumps. In a sense, if the price moves to too much, then the market is just halted. Uh, there, are, there are also now um, some uh, uh, propositions to actually change the where the, ma the marketplaces work. For instance, pr pretty much all trading venues operate under price time priority, meaning there are two criteria for execution of an order, price and time. We actually argue that there should be three criteria for a, a priority in execution, price, spread, and time. So we argue spread is the integral component because if spread was one of the criteria then market make makers would be incentivized to provide continuous uh, buy and sell limit orders but also provide stability to the market. Thank you very much for all these very insightful comments and uh, well we wish you the best of luck in developing more and more successful trading strategies based on high frequency trading. Thank you Flavio. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us. This was another episode of the Global Perspectives show in partnership with Dukascopy TV. I'm Flavio Roman. Until next time, goodbye and all the best.